Hey everyone, Scott here from Unon Sourcing, finally back. I'm getting into the busy time of year here, so I'm having a little bit less time to make the videos. Um, this question was sent to me by Theo in from the US, and uh, Theo asks kind of a three-part question. Um, what do most poor, but, uh, poor industry buffs consider the approximate cutoff age for Gushu? Uh, second part would is during your blind tastings, can you tell the difference between gushu cha and younger tea, uh, younger trees? How are they different? How can you differentiate them? Um, and he said he asks, have you had teas from younger trees that trumped those from gushu? These are good questions. Um, I'll start with the first question because that's relatively easy to answer. Um, the first question. Um, what do most poor industry buffs consider the approximate cutoff age for Gushu? Um, typically, um, we sp split it into three, three or four different um, groupings. The main thing, yeah, the, the main, the first one would be Thai Di Cha or plantation tea. That's typically, you know, um, you know, younger tree, uh, younger bushes um, growing in rows typically up to around 40 or 50 years of age. Um, the second grouping is what we call Huang Shan Cha, which is also plantation tea. Um, often it's um, older, uh, typically 50 to 80 years old. Um, that can also be trees too. Um, there's no set rule, and in fact, in some tea gardens, you'll see some some growing originally in, in, in bushes, and then you move up a little bit or to off to the side, and they've just been allowed to grow naturally. Um, old arbor, eighty to two hundred years. Um, that could be dashu cha or um gu shu cha um and then also ancient what i call ancient arbor which is typically 200 years or older Um, which is like the true gushu. Um, so typically, you know, the word gushu, it could mean, it could mean 100 years, it could mean 200 years, it could mean 300 years. So again, I, I, I differentiate plantation, tidy, up to about 50 years, Huangshan Cha, 50 to 80 years, Old Arbor, 80 to 200 years, and Ancient being 200 plus years. And again, the, the amount of ancient tea out there where it's, you know, you see these things, ah, oh, 500 year old tea trees, you know. Oh, and there's just really not that much, that many tea, uh, tea trees that are 500 years older. There's a lot of stuff that's between 50 and 100 years old, and a fair amount between 100 and 200 years old. 200 years or older, there is, but it, again, that's it's rare. And once the trees start to get older, they actually produce um, they produce less. Um, so, you know, these all these people talking about, oh, the, we have this 500 year old gushu ripe puer, and of course, to, to make ripe puer, you have to have several, you know, at least a few couple thousand, five thousand kilos, you know. So, I mean, that's just that's just straight up bullshit. Um, but again. That's how I would define it. Um, there's no, as far as I know, no set way to define it. But when I use those terms, um, that's typically how I define it, how I, um, how I group them. Um, so the second question, and this is probably the one that's going to take the most to answer, and I'm actually going to do a little experiment and, and insert pictures into um, segments of the video um, showing Showing the age, uh, you know, so show, showing some brood tea, Mao Cha, um, mostly old arbor stuff that you can see um, into the video. So bear with me on that. Hopefully it won't um, look too funky. 
I'm not a pro editor, so. Um, so again, um, how do you tell the difference between Gushu Cha and Younger Tees? And that's, you know, that's something that I have learned probably over, you know, many, many, many years. Probably, you know, really, I probably took me about six or seven years being full time in in Yunnan and drinking tea with with people that knew more about tea than me and drinking tea in the tea mountains where I could see the tea being picked and processed from the old tea trees and then drink it at the end of the day when it had been processed into Mao Cha and really being able to compare that with tea brought in from um, plantation bushes in the same area where you can, and then you can, you know, you look at the leaves, you can really tell by looking at the leaves, um, but I can also, at this point, I can just tell by drinking it. Typically, um, I find that gushu cha or older uh, tea from older um, trees or bushes tends to tends to have a, a lot more of an even even full-bodied taste. It doesn't dry in the mouth, um, and when you when you brew it from the start to the finish, it doesn't. It's not like like a lot of like harsh plantation teas like that you would see like in a Mung Hai Tea Factory 7542 production or something like that where it's just just really goes up really fast and then just kind of comes down and loses steam pretty fast and it you know it goes from it goes from being you know fairly harsh to being kind of monotone um, in in texture and in, and in flavor and in aroma you know after you know, five, six brews. Um, so Gu Shu Cha, on the other hand, or old tea tree uh, tea from the get go would be just pretty even. It would just be, it would just be delivering like this full bodied, you know, it might go up a little bit after three or four brews and maybe go down a bit, five, six brews, and then it'll plateau and then it'll just keep going. And often for 10 plus brews where you know, you're really getting this just nice, even, enjoyable, consistent, and and then you're getting, you know, like in your mouth, you're getting like this, the, you're getting the mouth watering feel, but you're not getting the drying tongue, you're not getting the dry throat. Um, I really pay attention to to how the tea makes me feel, um, and then once I brewed it, what I'll do is I'll take I'll take it and I'll put it in like one of these little um, these little dishes that I use. You can just put it in a bowl. And cover it with water and then just let it sit maybe for you know half an hour hour a couple hours and then you can just take it and look at it and you really start to know you really start to see um, you know like if you took one of for example if you brewed one of our you know sourcing old arbor ancient arbor productions from Iwu for example um, like Walong or Manjuan and then you took a 7542 from Dai Yi or or uh, or uh, Xiaguan uh, 8613 or Tuo Cha or something like that and you brewed it and then you put it in a bowl next to that Iwu Gu Shu and you let it sit and you take it out and you look at it and you'll see the scale of the leaves I mean, you get a lot more broken leaves maybe with some of the tighter compressed uh, uh, Mong Hai Tea Factory, Sha Guan Tea Factory productions. But if you get some leaves in the stems, you'll you really see that the scale of them is quite small compared to the Gu Shu Cha. It's, it's just like, it's like something, you know, it's this, it's really the scale. It's not, um, you know, the stem is more stout. And then the other thing worth mentioning is that with Gu Shu Cha, if it's been processed correctly, You'll get this kind of, um, in Chinese they say mo li se color, which is like all a dark olive olive kind of color that you'll get. Versus the plantation teas, which uh, from younger trees have the um, younger trees and bushes have a kind of almost a yellow green, kind of pale. The the leaves, um, the leaves are kind of almost transparent after they've been brewed, you know, and kind of a yellowing, light green yellowing kind of thing. 
um, going on with them. And the other thing that you'll notice too is that the stems of Gushut are extremely, um, extremely stout even after brewing. They, they, you know, they won't just they won't just break apart. Um, and if you roll the leaves between your fingers, they they still have some, um, they they still have some some real integrity and in the ability to kind of, you know, open again. And they they tend to they tend to be less malleable. Um, and they won't just break apart or turn to mud in your fingers. So um, let's uh, want to brew a couple of teas here um, because the next aspect really of um, of gushu cha and differentiating gushu cha is also understanding that not all tea grown in Yunnan and not all tea processed as pu'er is actually the exact same variety. Because Yunnan is the birthplace of pu'er, um, and the birth, or rather the birthplace of tea, um, there's so many uh, varietals and subvarietals of Asamaka, um, or hybrid naturally occurring hybrids, or intentional hybrids between Asamaka and Sinensis, or Asamaka and uh, Camellia taliensis, and and these other things that you can't really say, oh well. Um, I compared this Walong from Iwu. Um, actually, I've got a couple of uh, a couple of these teas here to talk about Walong. Actually, this we just got. This is now going to be in stock. This is a largely varietal, um, like a pure Asamica varietal from the village of Walong uh, near Iwu. Now, what's interesting is that Walong um, is actually near Ibang. And Ibang, the tea grown, a lot of the tea grown Ibang, is a mixed leaf varietal. Um, so it's kind of, it's actually much smaller in scale. Uh, Mangzhi, Mangzhi is also another. Um, typically, most of the tea from Mangzhi village, also in Iwu, and not that, not that far from Walong village, um, the tea leaves are quite small. And another example would be Ailao. And Wu Liang in um, in in Simao in Jingdong County of Simao, the uh, the tea grown there actually is um, and because of the altitude, I think the only teas that grow really well at that altitude, and, and a lot of them are above uh, two thousand meters, are actually mixed so mixed leaf varietals. In Chinese, we we call them Zhong Xiao Ye Zhong, and um, so if you take an, if you were to take a Wu Liang tea. Or an Ailao tea, and compare it to uh, Bulang tea, which is a Daijom, a large leaf varietal, or a Walong or a Iwu, a large leaf um, varietal uh, Iwu tea. The Wu Liang, the Jom the, the smaller leaf one, or the Ailao one, would look much smaller. Um, so you also have to be careful that that you're comparing, um, that you know what you're comparing. <laughs> Which can also be kind of confusing because if um, your source for the teas that you're getting, they're not honest with um, where the teas are from, then and they don't know what varietal they are, it can be rather confusing. So um, that's something also worth talking about. Here I'm brewing this one that I'm holding right now is um, is the Walong tea. And this is actually Mao Cha, but it's the same as what we've pressed in the cake. The Mao Cha is um, good for illustrating the example because once it's been brewed, um, you'll be able to see the whole leaves and stems. And I'm going to take pictures of those um, when I'm done and add them to the video because it's going to be hard to see them at this stage. Um, so again, Hua Long here. And I'll share a little bit of tasting notes too. Um, because the large leaf, Walong, and the medium small leaf, or Zhong Xiao Ye Zhong, Mangzhi over here, um, are quite different because of the different varietals that they are. And again, they're, the distance between these two areas is less than 10 kilometers.
and try some well that's the wash so maybe not particularly strong there but the mangjir being the smaller lake varietal um, tends to have um, kind of a less of an a bitter a bitter astringent profile and more of an aromatic sweet fruity pro profile um, maybe more akin to an oolong um, whereas the large leaf varietal it tends to be more bitter heavy um, and pungent Let's brew these again. And like I said, I'm going to insert pictures of these brewed out um, into the video. You'll be seeing them. So let's see if I covered it, most of it. Um, yeah, again, so areas with um, with what we call Jom Xiao Ye Jom. Um, one of them would be Jingmai area, uh, which is in southern um, this, uh, the Lanshan County in, in Sumao. Uh, one of the other main areas is, uh, is uh, Ailao and uh, Wuliang, which is in Jingdong County. Um, um, another one would be um, in Iwu. There are several areas, um, Mangzhi, uh, Shikong, uh, Gedan, Yibang. These are all um, kind of non non pure Asamica varietals that have um, that have been grown there for for centuries actually. So um, um, these are native native um, varietals. They're not. Um, you know, they're not intentionally created. I believe that they just adapted naturally. Of course, I'm not a botanist, so I, I don't know the exact reasons behind this, but I do know that we identify them differently. They look different and they, um, and they taste different. So again, we've got the, I'm gonna, we've got the Walong here, largely varietal. in the Mangzhi, the mixed medium small leaf varietal. So the next thing I'd like to talk about is um, is blind tasting, which um, I think is a great way for you to approach um, teas. You could do an experiment where you, um, again, getting back to the gushu versus um, plantation teas, where you could you could take um, you could take three Monghai Tea Factory uh, teas, and you could you know set them out, put them in a bowl. Maybe with a little crayon right under the at, at the at, under the bowl, give it a number, but not one that you can see. Then take three old arbor teas that you could get from us. You could just get samples, and um, and put those in bowls, and then mix them around. Then drink them. I mean, you don't even you don't have to do three samples of each. It could be two of each or one of each. Um, Break them apart, you know, get them ready so that they look somewhat similar, and then brew them side by side. And make notes and see if you can use, um, you know, some of, some of the things I've said in here about the traits of plantation versus gushu earlier in the video. I think that it'll be fairly obvious to you um, just by taste alone. And then take those um, teas once you brew them, and then put them back in the bowl and put water over them. You know, like I like to, I like to use these bowls, but they could be bigger bowls. Um, and then let them sit and make notes. Um, I think, again, one of the main things about learning, if you really want to learn the difference between these, between 
uh, you know, not only the different varietals, but also Gushu versus plantation, um, you really have to you really have to trust your source because if I didn't like for example if I didn't have a good way to you know to trust trust people when I was learning them saying okay this is Gushu and this is plantation and this is from Iwu and this is from Bulang and this is from Ailao and this is from Wuliang when you know that then you can start to compare and you can start to actually understand the differences between the different areas and you can actually start to understand the differences between uh, the age of the the trees and out and how the teas look and how they feel and how they taste and how they smell. Um, there's no easy way to do it and it does take a lot of time. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to email me or, you know, maybe I can do another uh, video response. This is definitely a topic that is a little hard to cover, but, um, again, I think that it's, it's something that you can learn. And I think that if you have appropriate examples, um, you have a, you know, you have a, a, a controlled environment where you have, you know, you have one that you know is a, is a Gushu and you have one that you know it isn't, then that's a good place to start. So I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.